Hello, this is Toph from Trifold Production with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can create a solar system in Blender fairly easily by using the physical celestial objects add-on for making procedural planets. Now that's a pretty long name for an add-on, but that's the name, the name of it. Uh, it's not a free add-on, you have to pay for it. It's like $50, so it's a little bit on the pricey end. Uh, but for what it can do, it's not too bad. Uh, the price kind of goes up. As you add more to it um, in terms of uh, other add-ons but the basic add-on works fine I think it's free updates and it's for blender 3.3 all the way to 4.2 uh, and I'm using 3.4 myself I'll leave a link of it below the video so you can download yourself and check it out but the installation process is still the same go to edit preferences install Navigate to where you've downloaded the uh, zip file. Click on install add-on. And let me type it in. I'm just going to call it PCO. Uh, just for short. That's the short name of it. PCO. And put a check in the box. And it's activated. And it's on the right hand side of the UI. Which is the toolbar. Which is down here. And it's just one button as you uh, first uh, open the add-on. Uh, but we're going to have the cube selected. We're going to delete this cube. So with the cube selected, press the leader and keyboard and get rid of that. And it works in EV and in cycles. But EV in this case is better because of the bloom aspect of it. Now I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to click on enable planets and change our viewport from what it is now to EV. So click on that icon and it'll set it up for us. And as you know, the solar system is pretty dark, so that's why the uh, the interface here is, is black. And click on Add Planets. And you can just type in whatever you want to call your planet. So I'm going to type in Earth, E-A-R-T-H. And I'm going to press OK. And there it is. Now this add-on doesn't import or create physical models of the planets. It's actually just like an image, a light image. Uh, that it creates which helps when it comes to rendering and with the add-on you can create as many plants as you want by just clicking on add new planet or the plus sign it will add more planets so it will populate them here but all the planets tend to conjugate in the middle here and you can easily move them out of the way by uh, the parameters and the position aspect of uh, the add-on now it's got a lot of transforms the transforms here are like it would be for uh, Blender's native uh, pivot points, uh, like when you're looking uh, at your scene for better uh, manipulation of the planets. You can change the transforms here, but I just leave it on global myself. Uh, the radius here can make the planet bigger or smaller. You can click in there and make it like 20, type in 20, enter, makes the planet bigger. You can change the rotation on the X, Y, and Z axis and the position, as I mentioned earlier, on the X, Y, and Z. Uh, the thing about this add-on, though, is that it doesn't come with textures. So you have to import the textures yourself or apply the textures yourself, which is not a, uh, a big thing. I'll show you how you can do that with the add-on. The add-on makes it pretty easy because it sets up the node system for you. And if you want to find free textures, I found a site that provides planet textures to use. And I'll leave a link of it below the video so you can download yourself, download that also and use those on the planets themselves. And I'll show you how to download those textures and apply them to the planet itself. Uh, it's got textures for the albedo. Albedo is just another name for diffuse texture maps. Because different softwares have different names for the basic texture map. And albedo is just one, just the way to call a diffused map, map, that's all that is. A roughness map, height map, and emissions. <clears throat> now with emissions, you would want to use this for like the sun, things like that, or, you know, basically just the sun. Um, you can, it also has a slot here for the atmosphere, because as you know, when you see uh, videos or images from uh, telescopes or from a space ship that they've taken pictures of the galaxy or planets, it's there, there's the, an atmosphere around the planets, which would be like the dust clouds and things like that. 
And this is what this uh, add-on does here, this uh, parameter does. And here it also provides rings for like Saturn. Only issue with the ring uh, aspect of the add-on is that you can only apply rings to one planet. You can't have multiple planet planets with multiple rings or multiple planets with rings around all the planets. So only one ring per, uh, on the planet and that's pretty much it. So you can't have more than that. Uh, you can disable the planets by clicking that down there. Now we're going to, I guess, I'll show you, show you how you can actually apply textures to the planets here. Now the site that I'll leave a link for is here. It's called the solarsystemscope.com forward slash textures, which is also quite a long name, but that's the name of the site. It's got all the textures in it for planets, Mercury, Venus, Ven um, Saturn, so on and so forth. It's got textures for the Earth, a bump map, a normal map, specular map, clouds, um, sun, moon, and stars. Uh, let's download one for the sun so I can show you how the sun looks. We're going to pretty much create two planets. So to download the texture, click on download. And by the way, it comes in 2K and, 4, and 8K. Uh, 8K is a larger map. So if you want a close-up shot of your planet, 8K would work. But 2K works just as well. You have to keep in mind with the when it comes to the size of the textures, the bigger the size, the longer it's going to take for it to render out. So 2K would work fine. But once you click on download, it opens up a new window for you. And then right click and then save image as. And then you can save it anywhere you want to on your computer. I've already saved some on my computer to use for the tutorial. Now we're going to minimize this. And then we're going to go up to the albedo. We're going to open it up, click on open, go to desktop, navigate to where you've saved the textures. And I'm going to click on this folder, which I've created for the textures called planets. So I'm going to click on that. So I'm going to change my viewport here by clicking on this icon. I'm going to click on sun, open image. And it takes, oh, that was pretty fast. It usually takes some time for it to, to open up. Now this add-on, I thought it uh, having a sunlight in the add-on would affect the uh, planets, would have some interaction with the planet itself. But because the planet isn't a physical model of a planet, you don't even have to have a sun. The sun or source of lights in the scene doesn't affect the planet at all. If I click on my uh, planet, on my sun there, which is this spotlight, and I just press delete to my keyboard, the planet is still there, the sun is still there. So that doesn't affect it at all. It just has its own illumination so to speak now if you want to I guess get a full planet here because this is just like the if this was a planet this would be the side that would have the light on it and this side would be the side that would be in the shadows but this is our Sun so we're going to scroll down here and click on open again and choose that same texture planets click on Sun open image and now we have a full, a full, so to speak, planet, or full sphere, so to speak. And we want to crank up the emission to give it some kind of, um, some kind of illumination. So we're going to crank it up a little bit. And to give it that sun kind of feel, we're going to go to our settings here for rendering. And remember, it's got to be uneven and just click on bloom. And there you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's how, that's why uh, rendering it in EV is much better than in cycles because with EV we have that bloom effect which gives us that radiation, so to speak, from the sun. And all the planets come out looking like it did initially. We're going to create another planet here. Going to click on the plus sign and then we're going to call this one Earth. E-A-R-T-H. <coughs> Excuse me. Enter. And then press OK. And we can't see the, the new plan we just made because it's inside of this one. So we're going to move it on the Y axis, which is along this axis, by 20. So type in 20. Enter. And then there's, there's our second planet, but still too far inside. So let's type in 40. 
40 enter and now it's further out now it still has that um the whole shuttle part so if you want to make it whole like a full circle so to speak because this doesn't look realistic if this is the sun here our um, illumination will be on this side not on the other side but this is just how the add-on is we're going to actually make this the earth so we're going to i call this one earth this is actually the sun let me double click in there and we name this to the sun enter <clears throat> it's kind of late at night so i'm kind of trying to power in through here but let's click on the earth again scroll down to our albedo click on open and then click on planets and then earth open image and there's our earth now it looks fine here so to speak in terms of it being a full circle a full sphere if we tilt it this way still have that shadow there but we're going to go down to some parameters at the bottom here which would be the atmosphere we're going to click on enable and this may take some time to uh, render out in the viewport. If it takes longer than necessary, I'll stop the video and then start it back up when the uh, scene has actually uh, come back. So I'll be right back. And we're back. That took a little bit longer than I expected for it to render out. But if we look at the Earth, you see it's got this like um, kind of white kind of uh, haze on it. And that's the atmosphere of the planet, which contains the dust and so on, so on and so forth. And we can go down here. And the dust consists of uh, these different layers here. If you click on each layer, you'll have these settings here to, to uh, actually change the look of the, um, of, the, uh, of the atmosphere. That's what this does. You can disable it also because sometimes with this it kind of renders and causes the uh, render to take a longer time to render out so you can scroll down here click on each one and it still takes some time to just kind of select and choose I don't know why that is but I think because it's using Eevee Eevee uses the uh, CPU of your computer to render things out in the viewport so it takes a little bit longer each one you click on, it has all these parameters to, to adjust the set to make them all look different. So it's highly customizable. Uh, let's turn this off. Let's disable that. And then we're going to delete that planet. So I'm going to go back up here because I want to show you the rings also. Let's delete that. And then we're going to press add new again. And let's call this Saturn. And it keeps the same settings we had before for some reason for the position of the planets. Which is kind of strange because down here it didn't, doesn't show uh, that this was at 40. It still is at, is at 0 but let's just keep going. I'm going to name the Saturn S-A. Sorry about that. S-A-T-U-R-N. And then I'm going to press OK. Oh it disappeared back into the sun. But let's reposition that again by pressing, typing in the position aspect and typing 40 in the Y axis. 40, enter. Then we're going to scroll down again, press on open. We're going to go to planets. And let's choose a Saturn texture. Which you download it from that site, open image. And then we can scroll down further to rings. So we just click on procedural. This might take some time also. So, okay, it just dis when it disappears like this, it's just trying to render it out, but it'll come right back in a, in a bit. Okay, there we go. There we go, we have the rings here, the Saturn rings. And we can change the scale of it, the detail, the roughness, uh, disable it. I'll use a texture if you want to, but procedural is fine. Here, we can change the color of the rings by clicking on this tab here. Uh, the color wheel pops up. You can change it to red, green, change it to blue. And it has more parameters down here to change also. We can disable it also. So yeah, this is the uh, planet of the PCO, procedural planet add-on, which gives us the ability to create a solar system in Blender quite easily. So it's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, less, like I said before, it's a bit on the pricey side, uh, but for what it can do, it's 
it's kind of high, but you know, it can be kind of somewhat justified by what it can do. Uh, but hopefully, watch this video, you guys will learn something from it. So once again, download yourself and check it out. And once again, thank you guys for watching the tutorials. Hopefully it was helpful. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.